Today we're reviewing the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X 3D. This is probably the last call for the AM4 socket. It's unlikely they have any more official launches after this, but it's a bit of a weird chip. And we talk about this in the news announcement about this CPU and specifically the oddity was that Micro Center is handling all of the announcement details and also is the only retailer for it. So the reasoning for this, as we discussed last time, and we'll link it below so you can get the full information on it, is simply that the 5600X3D is made of defective 5800X3Ds or basically 58X3Ds that failed validation. This is not abnormal, it's not a new thing. Uh, in fact, frequently in the past, Intel would basically downbin or downspec its CPUs to create those lower end products by taking possible wafer defects and trying to turn them into something else. So that aspect isn't news. It's just that AMD didn't have enough of these to do a global launch. And rather than trash them all, they decided to just ship enough for one retailer. And that means it's not even US exclusive. It's like parts of US exclusive. Well, this launch was a total surprise to us. And we had a lot less time to get hands on with the CPU than normally, partly because they tried to rush it out around July 4th and because Micro Center was handling it. They don't have a lot of experience with that yet. Uh, but we're going to look at it. It's $230 CPU. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Lexar Ares RGB DDR5 memory. Lexar's high-end Ares line supports both XMP and Expo profiles, making it easy to deploy on Intel and AMD platforms alike. That makes it simple to transplant the memory from one system to another and still retain a tuned profile on stick. Lexar's Ares line ships in varying frequencies, but the kit we have is DDR5-6000 and it's overclockable. Learn more at the link in the description below. So at $230, the 5600X3D would have been an amazing price if it launched in the original pricing market of the 5000 series. But the market has changed a lot. And if you, like our team here, haven't looked at the prices for the 5000 series in a while, it's worth another look, even if it's just for some secondary computer or something, because it's gotten crazy. So the 5600 non-X, $140 now, uh, which makes it an interesting budget option. The 5600X is 170 so that makes it a fierce competitor against AMD's own new CPU, the X3D, at 230 And then the 5700X, which is what the 5800X should have been, as we said in that review, is now about $200, maybe 210 or so. As for AMD's cheapest 7000 series CPUs, that'd be the 7600, it's about 215 bucks, and the 7600X, which is about 230 uh, and then you also have the massive price jump for a different platform and for DDR5 instead. So this CPU, the main market for the 5600X3D is definitely going to be drop in upgrades. Micro Center technically is doing bundles where you get a CPU and RAM. We haven't looked too much into them, but the cheapest one was something like, it was about 330 bucks. You got a B-series motherboard AM4. You got some classic, as an aged G-Skill Rip Jaws memory. I think it was 16 gigabytes. And then the 5600X3D. And those three things together, they had at 330 bucks. So it's plus 100 over the CPU itself, which actually is a pretty good price. You will be responsible for the cooler. They don't include one. But that appears to be the marketing behind this, where it's Micro Center is making this in store which means they want you to buy other things with it. They're using it to sell stuff that's been sitting. Let's be real. That's why they do bundles. And uh, so that's kind of the market. It's you either spend in the 300s for three core parts or you drop it into an existing system. So we're going to do this review with that in mind, meaning when we talk prices, we're mostly focusing on AM4 because those are the other things you could drop into a system. Uh, because of this weird launch, the way it's been handled. We'll look at Intel, of course, too, and AMD 7000 series in case you're just doing a complete new build. And for those, we're only going to look at the CPU prices, but we'll remind you frequently of the uh, different motherboard and memory costs. As for the 5600X3D specs and details, we covered this in our news video last week. We'll link that below. You can watch it for the full details, but the shortest possible version is this. It launches tomorrow. The reviews are going up early, but it'll launch when stores open the day after this review goes live. The 5600X3D is again made up of leftover or defective X3D CPUs from the 5800s, and it's limited in supply. Micro Center is the only official retailer for it, and Micro Center told us that it expects three to six months of availability for this part, and AMD is only making one batch of these CPUs, again, according to Micro Center. The CPU is a six-core, 12-thread 5600X with lower frequency 
and higher cache. The specs are on the screen if you want to see them. Overall, you should expect this to encroach on the 5800X 3D in gaming performance, but lose capability against the 5700X or the 5800X in production applications due to the core deficit. Now, we're about to get into the benchmarks, but a quick note here. Again, this dropped in our laps with really no notice and uh, about one week less, one work week less of time to work on this CPU than we typically get. Plus, we had the added complexity where uh, I already had several team members scheduled for time off scattered around or on July 4th, U.S. holiday, of course, uh, and I wasn't about to tell everyone, never mind, come to work and benchmark the CPU we got with no notice. Uh, obviously, we just, everyone kept with their plans. So the reason I'm pointing that out is because I would have liked to add a couple CPUs to these charts. We have a bunch of new data in here. We ran as many through as we could without having to screw up people's plans. Uh, but obviously, I wanted to respect those and I also wanted to respect my own plans. So what we ran through was some of the, the 5700X, the 5600X again. We did some retests to refresh things. We didn't get to the 13400F, which I would have liked to add. Uh, 13400 is about the same price as the 5600X 3D. Of course, though, it's not a drop and upgrade. I mean, I guess you could drop it into your AM4 motherboard, but probably inadvisable. And we would have liked to look at the 13500. However, we've already tested the 13400F, and that review is on the channel. Fortunately, if you do relative scaling just with percentage math, then it's very easy to get an overall relative uh, distance between the X3D and the 13400F by using something else as a reference point, looking at the previous review. With all that said, we're planning to do a full refresh of the bench pretty soon anyway, because we just added Stellaris to testing, so we need to run them all through. But that'll be up in the future. Let's get started. First up, we'll quickly look at frequency versus the original R5-5600X to help give context to the performance figures. This will also validate that AMD is hitting its marketing targets. And spoiler alert, it doesn't. Here's a frequency plot with a one core workload. In this one, the 5600X 3D was still below the advertised 4.4 gigahertz speeds. AMD isn't hitting what it's marketing. Being off by 50 megahertz is actually a pretty large gap. Now, technically, there are a few blips to 4400 megahertz or just past it, but six plotted instances out of over 500 doesn't really qualify for hitting that marketing, in our opinions. And also, honestly, some of this just ends up being noise within the logging software. The 5600X held about 4650 megahertz for the entire test. So this helps to explain that, yes, they can hit the numbers, and actually this one exceeds the original claim by 50 megahertz. Unfortunately for AMD, the two don't average out. They need to hit the marketing every single time. But 50 megahertz off doesn't completely kill the product. It's just a little disappointing to see this regression in the specs, or at least hitting the claim to specs. Let's move to some games. We're gonna start with the two games where we saw the most uplift in previous X3D tests. Tomb Raider is up first. Another game where we've seen massive uplift from 3D vCache CPUs is Far Cry. That'll be next. The 5600X 3D's 301 FPS average pushed it into the company of Intel's much more expensive 13900K and also near AMD's own 7700X. Again, more expensive than the 5600X 3D at $300. The 5800X 3D is 10% ahead of the 5600X 3D, so they're pretty close even with that extra two cores on the 58X 3D, and only the modern 7800X 3D, a $440 part now, is ahead of that. Compared to the cheaper options, the gain of the X3D CPU over the 5600X is a massive 39%. The benefit against the 5700X is similar, as our recent rerun of that CPU has it at 221 FPS average. Titles like this and Far Cry are going to be the strongest cases for the 5600X 3D since they allow it to encroach on the 5800X 3D, but they still have a significant gap from the far cheaper 5600 and 5600X CPUs. 1440p promotes some movement of the top few parts, but overall the 5600X 3D still carves out enough of an advantage to be worth considering even with a slight or inconsistent GPU bind. In Far Cry 6 at 1080p, the 5600X 3D ran at 163 FPS average, boosting it 30% over the 5600X non-3D, with lows also higher. As we've seen before, the vCache works in the right scenarios. The 5700X's 132 FPS average allows it good value positioning, 
basically where the original 5800X should have been, as we said in our 57X review, but the 6-core X3D still outperforms it significantly here. The extra cores are just less helpful in this game. As for the 5800X3D, it's still ahead of the 56X3D and it holds about an 8% lead. Lows are proportional here as well. This makes the 5600X3D a seriously strong drop-in end-of-life option for AM4. For gaming, the nearest AM5 price option is the 7600X, which is outperformed by the 5600X3D. Owners of existing builds would get one last gaming uplift with this without going up to the 5800X3D. And as mentioned earlier, we don't have all of Intel's current CPUs on here since this was a total surprise launch. The closest we have in our data set right now is the 13600K, which ran at about 176 FPS average. That's ahead by 8% and is sold about $60 to $70 higher than the 5600X3D. As for 1440p, the results were the same. We're not GPU bound, so it makes sense that there's no change in the middle of the stack. Only the 7800X3D shows any change here, and it's not much of one. Final Fantasy XIV is up next, tested first at 1080p. The gain isn't as large here, but there's still an improvement. The X3D parts 210fps average, 116fps 1% low, and 83fps 0.1% low allow it a lead over the 5600X in all three metrics. Frame time pacing hasn't improved disproportionately, it's just in step with the average. The boost is 18% overall, with the lead over the 5700X similar at 16%. Keep in mind that the 5600X's $170 price means the X3D is about 35% more expensive right now. It's late in the cycle, so remaining inventory has become cheap. It's a real gain, it's just you are paying more for that performance. Compared to the same priced 7600X, there's not much of a difference, at least in performance. But the entire rest of the platform is cheaper or maybe even already in your possession, and you can just drop it in. The 5800X3D is similarly not much of an improvement, although the price gap isn't as large and the platform remains the same. Intel's 13600K holds about a 21% lead here, keeping its trend of generally higher performance in this game. Like with Far Cry, there's no change to the middle of the stack at 1440p. Actually, there's basically no change, other than some small movement. Even the 13900K remains about equal in performance, so we're fully CPU bound here. In Cyberpunk at 1080p, the 5600X3D posted a 22% uplift over the 5600X, with a slightly higher lead over the 5700X as a result of the higher base clock on the 5600X. The 5600X3D managed to outperform the 5900X and even the former flagship Intel 10900K. The new CPU is also within striking distance of the higher core count 5800X3D. 3D vCache clearly still works, even on a 6-core part, and maybe even better, seeing as there's no multi-chiplet complexity that we saw with, say, the 7900X3D that we didn't even bother to rerun for these charts because it probably shouldn't exist. We'll skip 1440p for this one. It was GPU-bound, so the 5800X3D and 56X3D looked identical, as did most of the other high-end parts. CSGO is next, tested at 1080p. CSGO had the 5600X3D at 346 FPS average. That's tied with the 5800X3D, and in fact, even the lows are tied. Between these, we had eight test passes, and the end result is about the same. So it's impressively consistent. But of course, it also means that the 5600X3D is taken from the 5800X3D's viability in this title. Overall, though, that's also true of the 5600X and the 5700X. The 5700X is $20 to $30 cheaper than the 5600X3D, and it manages the same performance in our recent reruns, in this game at least, albeit with marginally longer peak frame times, but not noticeably. That makes the 5700X a better deal in this specific instance. The 5600X, though, is significantly cheaper and only gives up a 5% lead to the X3D, so it's an even better value. We don't have the 5600 non-X retest anytime recently, but at $140 today, it's also worth a serious consideration and has become basically one of the best budget options. The relative scaling for that one remains about the same as when we first reviewed it if you want to check that review. Rainbow Six Siege recently updated, and the update improved performance, which is good overall, but it's bad for us. It wiped out all of our comparable data because the numbers no longer match the game's current patch. We reran just the three most relevant AM4 CPUs for this test. That's what we had time for. Normally we wouldn't bother with a chart that only has three parts on it, but it's still interesting data. 
The 5600X3D held about 600 FPS average. For reference, in the pre-patch tests, the 13900K was over 800 FPS, so there's plenty of room for scale left here. That means the 5600X3D gained about 14% over the 5600X in average frame rate performance, with lows also boosted. The lead over the 5700X is only 11% in this one. While we're on the less populated charts, up next is Stellaris. This was added by popular demand among our audience. We won't be fully detailing the methodology for it today. This is the first time we're showing it in a chart, though. Our next major refresh of the test setup will detail what we're doing more exactly. But the basics are that we're averaging the turn time over multiple test passes. That's opposed to FPS, so the time matters more. That means lower is better. This is also new, so we only have five parts on this one, and all of them are AMD. We'll add Intel next bench refresh. The R7 7800X3D managed to pull ahead of everything else tested so far. The term time reduction against the 7700X was 6%, or 10% reduced from the 7700. As for the 5600X3D, that one required 38 and a half seconds per turn on average. It's therefore allowing the 7800X3D a reduction of 26%, but it manages a time reduction of 13% against the R5 5600X. Now for F1 2022. In this one, the 5600X3D ran at 393 FPS average, leading the 5600X by 27%. That's another large lead over the namesake predecessor. It's near the 5700X2, so the gain over the budget 8-core counterpart is similar. Once again, the new X3D is near the 7600X, close enough that the price wouldn't be worth it if only for gaming performance. The 13600K ends up behind the 5600X3D this time, with the 13700K and 13900K contending against AMD's impressive 7800X3D performance in this game. Blender is up first. In this one, loading the CPU cores with tiles to render, the 5600X3D required 22 minutes to complete the GN logo scene. That has the 5800X3D better by 22.6% time reduced. Although it's not on here anymore, our last runs of the 5800X non-3D showed that it outperformed the 3D CPU marginally in most of these tests for its faster frequency. As for the 7600X, it posts a large 29% time reduction in this one. Despite being the same core count, the architectural and frequency improvements benefit it in a big way. If you do more of a mix of core intensive workstation use with your gaming, that'd be where the newer, same core count CPUs would do better from either Intel or AMD. And as for Intel, the 13600K also posts a large advantage, landing at just 11 minutes to render. Code Compile of Chromium is next. For this one, the 5600X3D required 117 minutes to complete the compile. That's almost identical to the 5600X, with the two with an error. There was no benefit from the extra cache in this particular type of compile, although there are workloads that can benefit from the extra cache. The 5700X ended up a better value here, posting a 96-minute result from its core count increase. Intel's 13600K halves the time required by pulling a 55-minute result. The X3D still does fine here, it's just not the reason you'd buy it. In Adobe Premiere testing live playback, renders, filters, and other features, the 5600X3D scored 869 points in aggregate. That has it ahead of the 5600X by 50 points, or 6%. That's a real lead, it's just not much of one, or particularly worth it for the money. The 5700X manages an 8% lead over the 5600X3D while being cheaper, making it better value between only AMD options. Intel's 13600K remains a particularly competent performer here, as do the 13500 and 13400, although we haven't rerun them recently. The 13600 though lands in the top half of the chart, and if you want to see some 134 numbers, the relative scaling between it and the 13600K will remain identical even though the absolute numbers have changed. So you can check our 13400 review to see the percent scaling. In Photoshop, the R5 5600X3D scored 1120 points in aggregate by using a similar approach to the Premiere test suite, both done with Puget's tools. That result has the 5600X3D technically ahead of the 5700X, but realistically, they're the same. The lead over the 5600 is outside of error and is about 1.7%, but nothing meaningful. That's consistent with other workstation tests, and Intel's more expensive 13600K, meanwhile, is significantly ahead at 1489 points, or a 33% lead. The 5800X3D is ahead of the 5600X3D as well, and predictably, establishing its core advantage. And finally, here's a quick look at CPU power consumption. In this test, the R5 5600X3D pulled 74 watts in an all-core Blender workload. That has it the same as the Intel 13400F, 
and insignificantly more than the 5600X. As a reminder, the 5600X was the most efficient CPU we tested back when it launched, and so that translates well to the X3D. It keeps roughly the same power consumption, but it increases the gaming performance sometimes significantly as an overall uplift for efficiency in those scenarios. So the 5600X3D, it does what it's supposed to do. It's just that the market's changed a lot because they're launching an AM4 part so late in the life cycle of it. It's cool. It's cool because it's different and it's abnormal for any of these companies to launch something that is that generationally old at this point but is still a relevant part. And that, that last qualifier is important because NVIDIA released GT 710s for like eight years, but they weren't relevant. This one is kind of relevant. Uh, the biggest threat to the CPU, since it is mostly meant to be a drop in upgrade, is not Intel, but rather AMD's other AM4 CPUs. The 5700X at the current $200, $210 pricing, it's noteworthy. It's just that, it, mostly for being a little bit cheaper still, not because it's better. The two extra cores help in production workstation tasks. In those instances, it does pass the 5600X3D in pretty much every scenario we looked at. But in gaming, it really doesn't. Uh, CSGO notwithstanding where it just doesn't really seem to care about the cash that much. As for, say, the 5600X, that's a really good budget option, 170 bucks, but even better still is the 5600 non-X at $140. Pricing becomes particularly challenging to evaluate because the 5600X3D's primary value is you can get a board and some RAM for 100 bucks more, which is, yes, a great deal, but it's really not that great, the RAM, and you know the board's just whatever they have in the back of the warehouse. So looking at pricing of the CPU only, your closest competitors are things like 13400 series Intel CPUs, like the 13400F, maybe 13500, a little higher end, uh, or you go to the AMD 7600 or 7600X. It's just that the benefit you get uh, is, is kind of lost, at least in terms of value, because the motherboards are more expensive for those, DDR5 is more expensive for those, and that becomes the limiting factor. So the lead over the 5600X is anywhere from 10 to 40% in gaming. The upper end of that is impressive and enough to consider alone. The 5600X at its new price is good, of course, it's just that this is a really strong gaming competitor and it fights off the 5800X3D pretty well. The efficiency on the 5600X3D in gaming is also particularly strong because the power consumption's gone up by 10 watts, so yes, an increase, but the gaming performance has gone up by so much that it ends up being an overall efficiency uplift. Now, unfortunately, AMD missed the frequency by 50 megahertz here. It's not the biggest loss. It's just we, we got to stay on them about this as a community and as reviewers especially because AMD had a really hard time with, I think it was the 2000 series or 3000 not hitting the advertised numbers. They fixed it and they actually overperformed with advertised numbers in this, the 5000 series and now they're sliding back again. And maybe this is because it was rushed for them too, and uh, you shouldn't need a new BIOS for this because in theory, the 58X3D BIOS already supports this CPU, but maybe there's some more tuning they can do there to force out that extra 50 megahertz. It could be chip to chip, but the worst chips should still be hitting the spec. And, and six instances out of hundreds doesn't count for us. So uh, it's unfortunate and disappointing to see them missing the spec again after having fixed it, but at least 50 megahertz, I mean, the performance is real, it's there, it works. So it doesn't kill the product, it's just annoying. Anyway, that's it for the review. Super interesting release just in general. Let us know what you think about it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty limited, so that's unfortunate, but I mean, I said this in the news video, I'd rather personally see if there's sufficient defective chips to supply even one retailer, I'd rather see them go there than sit on a shelf until someone in logistics goes, why are we using a shelf with this? And then throws them out. So uh, this, this is at least a good use for it. But anyway, good drop and upgrade and a last call for AM4 uh, pricing is not bad, but it's a very competitive market. So take a look at the 5700X and the 5600 as well if you're doing AM4 upgrades from something older. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching as always. Subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. And check back on Saturday on July 8th at 9 a.m. Eastern time. We are publishing our full documentary of AMD's testing lab and facilities. We actually filmed it back in March 
and we've just pieced it all together. Super cool video, very in-depth, and uh, we can't wait to run it. So check back on Saturday for that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.